my name is Carol Striplin. I work here at the Artisan Center, and today I'm going to show you how to throw a cylinder on a pottery wheel. Um, yeah, let's do it. So the first step, you want to have some nicely wedged clay. Wedging is like kneading. Uh, the purpose is to get the bubbles out, which I have already done. And then once I have my clay wedged, I'm going to throw it into the middle of the wheel with the attempt of getting it as close to the middle as possible. So I'll do that first. And the reason why we're doing a cylinder today is because a cylinder is the, the form which most tall shapes are based off of. So that's a good start. Most starting students usually start with cylinders. So we'll get started here. Turn the wheel on. This wheel's special. It spins even when it's off. <laughs> that's my favorite. So you always want your clay to be moist. If it dries out, your hands will get stuck. So that's the first thing that you need to do. And I'm going to do a process which is called centering. Right now, if you look at the way my hands are on the clay, it's really, really bumpy. So if I tried to throw, say, a cylinder or anything with it that's bumpy, it would be, well, it, it wouldn't come out very well. <laughs> so the first step is centering. And um, the basic premise is you put force on opposite sides, which makes the clay go perfectly into the center. And by the end of the centering process, when I put my hands on it, they shouldn't move. So let's get started. First, I'm going to push the clay together, which is going to rise it into a cone. And this is called coning up. I keep periodically adding water. And I'm going to come up to the top and rest my hands at the top. And then the next process is coning down. I lock my hands together like this wrap my fingers around the clay, and push down. You can also use your thumbs on the top, too, and go like this, either way. Or you can use your fist. You bear your weight into the middle of the clay. And you can repeat this process as many times as it takes to get the clay centered. For beginners, it's usually three or four, possibly even more. And then once you get a little bit more practiced, it takes usually one or two. And sometimes you'll encounter bubbles. I think there might be a bubble in this clay. I feel a little wobble down there, so we'll see if we can get rid of that. Bear your weight into the center. That's pretty close. I'm going to do it one more time. I always start right down on the bottom when you cone up. The wobbles are always down on the bottom. That's where they start. So cone up, squeeze my hands together. And then we'll go back down. And you can do this process as slowly as you want, going back down and back up. Oh, there's my bubble. It's right in there. I think it just popped. All right, so we'll just bear our weight into the center until the clay stops wobbling. That's pretty darn good. So you notice my hands, they are moving just a tiny bit, but that's, that's close enough. All right. So I did that process, centering process, at the fastest speed that the wheel will go. And now I'm going to do what's called opening up the form. And we do that at about half as much as the speed can go, as, as much as the wheel can go. The first step with that, I'm going to push my fingers down, my thumbs, pardon me, into the center. And I'm going to make just a tiny little indentation and put some water in there. And it's best to do this process pretty slowly. If you do it too fast, it'll probably be off center. So just keep pushing down with your thumbs. Another way to do this too is to put your hand around the side and then to push down with your fingers. So this is how we open our form. And I'm going to stop when I'm about half an inch away from the bottom. You can go thinner than that if you want, but that's a good, good for beginners. So right now, it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom, so I'm going to slide my finger across to make it wide at the bottom, because cylinders are wide at the bottom, and then they come up straight. So we're going to do that. 
I'm going to cut my hand on this right hand side and slide my hand, my fingers towards my palm on my right hand. You can see how it's already starting to take a cylindrical form right there. So, one of my favorite tools, really the only tool that you actually need to throw a pot, in my opinion, other than your hands and water, is a sponge. There are other tools that come in handy, too, right here. This is called a rib, quite handy for if you need uh, a tool that's stronger than your hand, this is a great tool to use. Needle tool, wire tool, we'll use those later. But right now, we're just going to use our hands in the sponge. And I keep my, so we'll just show you something that's kind of important. I always want to keep my hands when I'm working with clay, aside from centering, between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. If this was a clock, I'll turn it so you can see. So I keep my hands right over here. From my perspective, it's on this side. So I'm going to get the wheel going again here. Not that fast. So now we go a little bit slower. Make sure everything is nice and moist. And I'm going to do what's called lifting the wall. Um, when you lift a wall, uh, it's called a pull also. You are just lifting the clay up and making it a little bit thinner each time. You don't want to make it as thin as you would imagine you want it to be right off the bat. Otherwise, the top piece of the clay will come right off. So we're going to do it pretty slow. And I put my left hand on the inside and my right hand with a sponge on the outside. And I'm just going to put pressure both from the inside and the outside. And both hands rise at the same time. They're right across from each other. Get the clay wet again. That was our first pull. And every time that I pull, I slow down my wheel just a little bit. Let's do it again. So you can see how it is starting to take a cylindrical shape. And we do have a little bit of a wobble, but that's okay. When you're throwing a cylinder, especially beginning students find that the walls tend to come out this way. So the next step that I'm going to show you is called collaring in. You put equal pressure on all sides, and you make the pot just a little skinnier. Bring it in a little on the top to prevent it from going out. This the centrifugal force of the wheel makes it want to go out. I'm going to get the excess water out of the bottom here. All right, let's do another pull. So we're going to start right down at the bottom. Every time you pull, you want to start down on the bottom. No, well, you see how it is starting to go out, so we're going to collar it again. Right like that. I'll do it again. So I'm going to go for a relatively high cylinder here. This step, once it gets a little higher, we do stand up just a little bit, unless if you are have a longer torso and you're taller, in which case you might be able to do it. Right from your chair, but I do prefer to stand. So that's pretty good. It's about this thick. It is a little bit thicker on the bottom, which is good. Just a little bit. And just to finalize the form, we can use our rib. Instead of using the sponge on the outside, we'll use our rib on the right-hand side. And this is very nice and flat. So for a cylinder, this is a wonderful tool to use because it takes all the guesswork out. <laughs> so I'm going to start down on the bottom. There's a little bit of excess clay down there, so we'll get rid of that. Sure, the inside is good to go. And then we're going to finalize the form by pushing the clay against the rib and come all the way up to the top. And we'll rest there. And as you can see, this pot does have a little bit of a wobble, which is okay. 
not perfect, but a few things in life are, so. And I'm just gonna call her in one more time, just to get that nice, tall, cylindrical form. Last but not least, I'm gonna set my rim. Smooth out the top of the clay right there. You just rest your fingers on the top and the sides, and then come off. And that is a basic cylinder. So, if I was going to make something else, I could make a vase or a pitcher out of this, or it could be a very, very tall coffee mug. Um, I would then, uh, using pressure on the inside and outside, I could make the walls go out or in, which if you come and take your class at the Artisan Center, we'll teach you how to do that. All right, thank you. Have a great day.